Set in rural India during a phase of urban development, Kamala Markandeya, a renowned Indian author, presents her acclaimed novel, Nectar in a Sieve, 1954. The narrative revolves around Rikmani, an elderly woman who contemplates the various challenges and triumphs that have defined her lifetime. Married at the tender age of 12 to Nathan, a farmhand, Rikmani grapples with the pursuit of happiness as she toils in the fields, confronts unimaginable losses, and navigates the sweeping transformations occurring in her homeland. The novel's title, Nectar in a Sieve, draws inspiration from Samuel Taylor Coleridge's 1825 poem work Without Hope. This literary work has achieved remarkable success, with over one million copies sold. Harper's Magazine has lauded it as very moving, the Milwaukee Journal described it as a novel to retain your heart, and the New York Herald Tribune deemed it an elemental book with something better than power, the truth of distilled experience. Narrated by Rikmani, an elderly Indian woman, the story unfolds in rural India. Rikmani, the educated daughter of a village chieftain facing better days in the past, is wedded to Nathan, a local farmhand, at the age of 12. Nathan treats Rikmani with dignity and respect as she familiarizes herself with her customary chores and household responsibilities. Within a year, Rikmani and Nathan welcome their first child, a daughter named Ira, and celebrate a bountiful rice harvest. However, in the ensuing six years, Rikmani does not conceive another child, raising concerns about her ability to provide Nathan with a son. Worried about this matter, Rikmani seeks help from a foreign doctor named Kenny while visiting her ailing mother, all without Nathan's knowledge. Kenny's treatment leads to Rikmani giving birth to five children. Yet, with each new addition to the family, financial constraints become increasingly burdensome. The construction of a nearby tannery disrupts the village community, and Rikmani's two eldest sons, Arjun and Thumbi, secure employment at the tannery. Their earnings provide substantial support to the family, but their involvement in a labor strike ultimately leads to their dismissal from the tannery. Rikmani and Nathan take the initiative to arrange a marriage for their daughter, Ira. However, a devastating monsoon wreaks havoc on their crops, resulting in their complete destruction. Rikmani expends her savings to provide food for the family. When it becomes evident that Ira is also unable to conceive, her husband's parents decide to return her to Rikmani and Nathan. In a clandestine move, Rikmani seeks Kenny's assistance once more to address Ira's infertility, without Nathan's knowledge. Regrettably, Kenny's intervention comes too late, as Ira's husband has already started pursuing another woman. In the midst of these events, Rikmani finds herself pregnant once more, giving birth to her final son, Kuti. Ira takes on the responsibility of caring for Kuti, which helps alleviate her depression. Subsequently, a drought strikes, causing the crops to wither, and the family faces hunger once more. To meet their lease obligations, the family is compelled to sell nearly all their possessions, leaving them in dire financial straits. Severe malnutrition becomes their grim reality, and they subsist on meager sustenance from leaves and roots. Kenny later secures a servant position for Rikmani's third son, Morrigan. Tragically, her fourth son, Raja, meets a tragic end, losing his life for stealing a leather hide from the tannery. Kuti's survival hangs by a thread as he nearly succumbs to hunger, forcing Ira into prostitution to provide for him. Despite their efforts, Kuti does not survive, passing away before a bountiful rice harvest that could have saved him. Upon Kenny's return from an extended journey, he brings the necessary funds to establish a hospital in the village. Kenny proposes to train Rukmani's sole surviving son, Selvam, as his assistant. Suspicion arises among the villagers, speculating that Kenny's kindness toward Rukmani might hint at a concealed relationship between them. This rumor is maliciously propagated by Kunthi, a former village wife turned prostitute. In the past, Nathan had assumed a paternal role for Kunthi's two sons, which she exploits to sow discord between Nathan and Rikmani. However, Rikmani eventually discovers the truth about Nathan's relationship with Kunthi and extends her forgiveness. As Nathan approaches 50 years of age, he grapples with debilitating rheumatism and a lack of farmhands to assist him. Despite Rikmani and Ira's efforts to aid him, their physical strength proves inadequate. Ira takes on the responsibility of caring for her newborn albino baby, whom she loves dearly despite the circumstances of his birth, which resulted from her time in prostitution. 
The family faces its most devastating setback when the landlord sells their land to the tannery. Nathan's age makes it impossible for him to lease new land, leading to their eviction from their cherished home of three decades. Subsequently, Rickmani and Nathan embark on a journey to the city to visit their son Morrigan, leaving Selvam behind to care for Ira and their grandchildren. With their possessions dwindling, the couple struggles to locate Morrigan. Their first night in the city sees them sleeping on a temple steeple, during which a thief pilfers their money and belongings. A mischievous child named Pulley comes to their aid, helping them find Kenny's medical colleague's residence. Upon reaching the colleague's home, Rickmani and Nathan discover that Morrigan had left his position over two years prior to take a more lucrative job in the collector's house. They also learn that Morrigan has deserted his wife and their severely malnourished baby son. Unwilling to burden their daughter-in-law, Rickmani and Nathan return to the temple, where they receive food for the needy. Despite yearning to return home, they lack the means to do so. Rickmani attempts to find work by reading letters but earns only enough to afford rice cakes. Pulley guides them to a stone quarry where they can find better paying employment and teaches them the art of stone cracking. Rickmani and Nathan gradually come to trust and rely on Pulley, who safeguards their meager savings. As time passes, a glimmer of hope emerges. One night, Rickmani indulges in extra food and toys for Pulley and her grandson. She fears Nathan's reaction upon her return, but upon reaching the temple, she finds him gravely ill despite the fever and monsoon conditions. Nathan persists in his toil in the quarry, laboring tirelessly. One fateful night, Rickmani uses her earnings to purchase a cart, hoping to transport the family back home. She races to catch up with Nathan on the street, but he collapses in the mud, his health deteriorating rapidly. Kind-hearted villagers assist in carrying the ailing Nathan to the temple, where he passes away in Rikmani's embrace. In his final moments, Nathan reminisces about the happiness they once shared. Following Nathan's death, Rikmani makes a solemn promise to Pulley, offering him the prospect of a healthier life if he accompanies her back home. Rikmani introduces Pulley to Selvam and Ira, officially declaring him her adopted son. In a gesture of unity and compassion, Ira prepares a meal for Pulley, while Selvam reassures Rikmani that the family will endure and overcome their challenges together. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.